Yep. Okay. Be live says we are live and uh, coming to you live from the subarctic where it's still dark, mostly dark and minus one Fahrenheit. So it's warmed up a bit. Can, uh, thank goodness. It's almost like spring here. What about you, Steve Campbell? Naples, Florida, sort of like you, except I, I just finished a, a run and it's like 78 degrees already. So it's almost like you, just a, a slight difference in temperature. Almost exactly like us. It's spring yes. in both places. Yes. And um, yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, we have uh, we have over five feet of snow outside. Uh, I'm in a hotel. I'm in lockup. And uh, when I walk out that front door, should I walk out? I have to look out my window. <clears throat> they've shoveled it and it's it's about five feet high the the piles of snow that line the sidewalks well there are some leaves falling on the uh, on the running trails so we've, we've got that <laughs> that that cushion <laughs> and and love so uh yes for you is it is it mostly business as usual for you it really is it's actually more business than usual um, which I think is fascinating. One of the things that's interesting about this, and I'm sure you've seen the same thing, you're, you're dealing with people who don't normally work from home. You know, we work from home all the time. We're used to using cameras and communicating this way. Other people aren't. So you, I find myself being uh, tech support for people who are trying to learn to do business at home now, which is interesting. But uh, my days now are waking up, working, running, eating, working, and that's it. There's nothing else because you can't go out to eat. You can't go out and do anything. And so you just work. Yeah. I suspect yours is much the same, except you're in a hotel room. Yeah, I was I, I was in self-isolation because my wife was in quarantine. Tomorrow ends that, so I have a little over 24 hours left in lockup. Nice. <clears throat> but but Alaska just issued the order to the, at 5 p.m. this afternoon. The state is on a statewide lockdown. I hope that I'll be able to check out of my hotel tomorrow. I can't see that they, ha they can make me stay and, and pay another $1,300 for uh, two more weeks uh, when all I need to do is drive three miles, five miles outside town and, and go home. Yeah. So uh, I have high hopes because I only have food for about three more days. And, uh, and, and In the and, hotel, you're, you're probably stocked up for you're, – you're good for three months at home. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Way, way more than that. We're uh, – yeah. So, I mean, we'll still get some groceries here and there, but not uh, not anywhere near what we would have to do where I would have to do here. And that three days could be six days unless it was a zombie apocalypse and it could be nine. So uh, this is, <laughs> I could stand to lose a few a few pounds and I'm uh, well conditioned for going a while. Anyway, we're here. It's uh, I see uh, somebody out there, a Facebook user. Hello from a fellow Floridian. Uh, where are you at in Florida? I'm curious. Hi, Elaine. And Thank then, Karen. and then, and then also, it says Facebook user. All you have to do is uh, on B Live itself. Uh, Erica Everest mm -hmm. has shared a link where you can register. That it just it recognizes your Facebook, and then and then uh, it will put your name in there instead of ah. Facebook user, which is all we see. Because right now, this is what we see. Unless you go into B Live and just register and say yes, you can uh, you can access my Facebook profile while I'm on B Live. Oh, and okay. then. And then cool. it'll show your name because then you have, uh, like here, Elaine has registered, so it pulls her profile and shows it, and that's it. It doesn't doesn't cost you anything. It's just it's just there. And that so actually is Elaine's hair, right? It 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 is it is. So uh, she is. Uh, I call her uh, a doppel Jen because Jennifer looks like uh, looks like Elaine, and uh, and Elaine looks like Jennifer. So. Uh, Yes, yes, I, I found that out the uh, the, the embarrassing way uh, in in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, don't 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 hug the wrong person from behind. Um, yes, yes, <laughs> that's a, that's a good lesson for everyone. I and I see that Facebook user is from St. Petersburg, Florida. So uh, welcome. I'm in Naples, which is a little bit south. A little bit south of that. Same same coast. St. Petersburg, but, uh, home of the Nink Conference. So so indeed, indeed, it, and it's the. Uh, the next conference that's in the the uh, the target in the crosshairs <laughs> in the crosshairs indeed because uh, yeah is it going or not it's right on the edge of whether we'll be back to uh, some semblance of normal or not I th I think we're fine in November I, uh, I I'm actually not we're not worried at all because I have full confidence that we will be back to being able to fly 
being able to meet, no hugs, whether from behind or, or from the front, no, uh, <clears throat> no handshaking, no uh, knuckles, <clears throat> plenty of hand washing, we'll have hand sanitizer, all of that. I mean, we'll do the different things, elbow bumps. Uh, I saw the, the, the foot taps, I would fall down, so we'll not, we'll not do those uh, because of the, you know. Will we be to. required to wear dinosaur outfits? Only, only if you want to be considered one of the cool kids. Okay. All right. And I have never been that. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Hanging out. Yeah. Doppel Jen and, uh, and Doppel Laney. So those two look for them. Uh, you, you can't miss them because you'll see one or the other. You might even see both in the same place at the same time. So, uh, but, but here we're talking about audiobooks. So, uh, instead yes. of you, you listening to me ramble senselessly, what are you seeing in the audio industry right now? Very big uh, overview-ish. Oh, well, big overview-ish is that just the explosion of, of content in the audiobook world. It's, um, if, if you've got content out there now, there are people who are interested in, in buying it from you. It, audio producers who are interested in buying it. Uh, there, there just seems to be an endless appetite for it. That, you know, when I run... I listen to audiobooks when I, that's that's what I do. If I'm in the car, I'm listening to audiobooks, and I think there are millions of people like that. There are lots of places where you can, if, if you're going to do it yourself, that you can that you can do it yourself as well. But boy, there's there's just a lot of a lot of demand for IP out there. Okay, and uh, I, we recently saw that uh, at ACX, they're no longer going to pay. If uh, you use a free code after March mm -hmm. 26th, and that's supposedly now, yeah, yeah, in theory. So supposedly, if you had your audio codes before then, you should still receive some kind of remunerate remuneration for those, and uh, any you get from here on forward, you do not. And more importantly, uh, I, I saw that they're. It looks like they're going to clamp down a little bit on the number of of codes that they give you, and those are you know super useful things in terms of getting reviews. We we have we LMBPN. I can't point to that because everything's backwards. Um, have a, a an audio Facebook group where we go and and we deliver codes to people with, with not the expectation, but with the desire, the hope that they'll like the audiobooks and leave a positive review. Yeah, the uh, I, I've given a lot of weight, and that juices the the sales as well. Yes, it does. I have yeah. given I have given uh, way more copies of my successful indie author series away than I've sold. So, uh, and and it was never in the intent to hey, I need I'm going to make money off this because they're paying me, and I'm going to give away all the codes. That that wasn't the intent at all. It was uh, first, it was for twenty bucks of fifty k. That's why I gave them away. I gave them all away in there, and mm -hmm. uh, second was to hey, I've got them. Why not? So. Uh, well, you, we you have both you have both uh, fiction and nonfiction that are you seeing a, a, a bigger demand for nonfiction right now just because people are have some time and, and want to learn no I'm seeing demand for my long fiction okay I have I have one set uh, I have two sets actually that is that are multiple books uh, the, my end times Alaska is uh, three books about 24 hours my Cygnus space opera is 30 hours in a single credit. And those are those are are moving up. Those are because yeah, those are fantastic. And, and that is another thing that I, I think everybody knows is that you know the longer the better. Yeah. Um, the long books, uh, 150, 200,000 word books are very appealing to not only individuals from a from a, a single credit thing as as are the box sets where you single credit you get all this content, but the audio producers who are licensing this content are very interested in that that type of thing as well. Yeah, I just uh, <clears throat> I sold nine books to to Tantor, or licensed, of course, mm -hmm. uh, nine books to Tantor, and I have them bundled in three book sets. But that's not really how I sell them. I sell them either individually or all nine in one Omni, and they they wanted the three book bundles is how they were going to put them together and then sell them. Now, so are they not, are do you need then to pair your your books into three book box sets so that there's an audio book? sitting next to it no i already had those okay i already had those done they just aren't big sellers because mm -hmm. i have all nine books in one box set and yes. i have all the individual and i push that first book hard so i do mm -hmm. get a lot of sales of the individual books still but i get way more of the uh, complete omnibus edition uh, they didn't want to go that that extreme all nine books in one but once they're recorded and this is one thing i found with my my uh pay per finish hour 
uh, narrators, once it's recorded, they can jam it together in a single omnibus edition fairly easily. So it doesn't cost you a whole lot extra. Yeah, who did you have do yours uh, to jam them together? Did uh, you Chris have the Ekman narrator? Had... Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, because yeah. he does he does the uh, the post production as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is. It is relatively simple. We pay <clears throat> just an hourly rate to have someone put the box sets together, and it's shockingly cheap to get it done. So it, it yeah. doesn't take the people who know what they're doing much time to do this. My uh, my my traditional publisher for my End Times Alaska series. I asked him to do that because they had uh, my first three books in one uh, one bundle, and that sold phenomenally well. The individual books didn't because they were only 50,000 words each, mm -hmm. so they looked like thin paperbacks. But you put them all together, now you've got a, a – and especially I was uh, – Martel and G.R.R. Martin are right next to each other on the Barnes & Noble shelves, and that three-book bind-up now looked comparable to the Game of Thrones books. Because it's just nice. as thick, so nice. that 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 was a good tactical move on on uh, their part, and then binding it together. But I wrote short chapters, so uh, as they were doing the production on that, putting those three books together, the three books had I think 195 chapters. So uh, needless to say, they were less than amused uh, by all of that. <laughs> but uh, but uh, when they got it together, now it became it was a top one thousand seller. It was my it's my best audiobook seller out of all the ones I have. Now, something <clears> to keep in mind if if you're out there and considering doing this is that if your individual audiobooks are are selling well, it might not be the right time to to put together the box set. It, it's not unlike when your your ebooks are selling well. You don't necessarily <clears> want to do the box set right away. But the big difference between a box set for audio and a box set for an ebook, you can pull down the box set for an ebook. You can't pull down the box set for the audiobook. You're making a commitment. And once you yeah. do the box set, the sales of your individual books obviously are going to shrink tremendously. Yes. And there's a there's a huge push right in the beginning. So there's a lot of money that flows into your bank account right away. <clears> and then it levels out just like everything else. And then it's like, wow, did I did I make the right decision putting this into uh, an, an omnibus instead of just continuing to sell the individual books? We have we have one series that we prepare the uh, the box set for probably six months ago, and we haven't released it yet just because the individual books are selling so consistently well. Yeah, yeah, don't because uh, they will, especially audio, indeed. And I see uh, Elaine uh, asked a question. If you, if you redo your print book, no problem. But redoing an audio book, it's a whole different animal. So if you already have an audio book up, you're almost going to have to do a whole new audio book unless the changes you made are very small. And then you got to get with your audio book, uh, your narrator. And they can narrate some changes because I had errata in one of my books and Chris Abernathy, he's like, I, I can fix those. It's only like 10 sentences and a couple things here or there. He fixed them. He re-uploaded the files to uh, ACX and it's the correct audio now. But if you rewrite a book, that's almost like getting a whole new book. And then you got to work with ACX or one of your other providers. I don't think you'll be able to do it because now you've got two audios of the same book. So you, you, it, it it, it would be a challenge and would require yeah, it, a lot of upfront work. If you're if you're doing it, if it's the kind of thing where it's like I, I want to make the book a little bit longer and I'm I'm going to tweak maybe a chapter in the middle and add two chapters at the end, that's fairly simple for a narrator to do. And then then you can upload that new content and it'll it'll match up. But if you're changing, if you're making changes in in every chapter, uh, then essentially it just needs to be re-recorded and that's a, that's a big expense. I think that I technically I think it's 10%. If you change more than 10% of the book, you will whack the whisper sync. And also it becomes a second edition at that point. But all but if you go more than 10%, Amazon can force a new upload if people have bought your book. So they can force that. I've got a bunch of notices saying, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hey, these books have all been updated. Uh, you should update the copy on your Kindle. I, I'm not going to do that to like 120 books. I, I, I have a... Uh, a an egregious amount of books on my Kindle. So we're not going to do that. <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the state of the industry, who do you do business with? Oh, wow. Um, we do for LMBPN. We, we continue to produce some audio ourselves. We used to do it all ourselves. Um, and 
just from being in that business for a while, we decided to expand and, and look outside for licensing. Uh, we have a wonderful partnership with Dreamscape Media right now. Um, they they right away took a big collection of our content and including a lot of uh, Craig's books um, in 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 a single in a single deal, which was great. We also work with Tantor. We work with Podium. Uh, they're all great. They're easy to work for. Um, one thing that I will say about all of them, all comp all of these companies will come to you and say, this is our standard contract. Everyone agrees to it. We don't negotiate. They negotiate. And even if you've got just one book, read that contract <laughs> and make yeah. sure that it, it includes the things that, that you want because they will negotiate. And, and does not include – none of the people we work with have uh... – uh, like write a first refusal on any of your other work and stuff like that. That's uh, those are crimes against yeah, all that, humanity. Yeah, clauses. Yeah. Now we also we all we also work. I mean, we distribute our own stuff through uh, ACX. We used to be uh, exclusive with with Audible. Um, we are no longer exclusive with the new series that we do ourselves. Some of the older series. Um, we're we're still exclusive, but we're we're starting to move away from that. And something I think that a lot of people know, but it's it's not stated anywhere, is that if you've been in ACX as an exclusive at the forty percent rate for over a year, they will listen to you if you want to if you want to go wide. And uh, my experience and the people that I've spoken to is is they agree almost all the time. So if you want to go wide, you can. And if if you do choose to go wide. Uh, find a way. Find a way. Voices is a is a great is a great partner for that. And uh, I've got a question up on the screen. Can you can you take that one? Yeah, Steve? yeah, I can see it. Which audio production company would you recommend for someone who wants to pay production up front and maximize royalties? Wow. Um, so the one answer would be just do it yourself through ACX. So, uh, for example, most narrators can arrange for post production. You if you know who you want to narrate the book, or if, if you've got some ideas, you can talk to them. They will narrate for you, and either you can upload it to ACX. Well, you would have to if you were paying for it. You would up upload it to your ACX account, and then you get all the money. Um, find a way is great. If you don't want to do all of that heavy lifting, they'll find the narrator for you, and you still keep most of the money. They find a way, I believe, keeps 20%. That, that may have changed recently. I don't know. Um, but the last time I looked at it was 20% and it's, it's worth it for all the, for all that they provide and they distribute everywhere. It's, it's 20% of the royalties. Yes. So it's not, so, yeah. if you're getting if, 40%, if you get, they take half of it. No, no, right. not at all. Right. And, and they're also, I mean, a, another thing that's, that's kind of exciting. It's new ish. A lot of people don't understand it. People are shocked when they find that their audiobooks are available on Spotify, for example. But if you're using a provider that distributes to Spotify, yes, they're going to they're going to be on Spotify, and yes, people can listen to them for free. But you're getting paid per track essentially when that yeah. happens. So you do you do get paid. Um, that's another way cool. thing that's another thing that's very cool for for listeners uh, or consumers of audiobooks is when you go wide, the opportunity f with uh, partners like Hoopla and just libraries in general. Um, the the payment structure through Distrib distribution companies who go through those libraries it's very compelling and uh you'll you'll they consume a lot of books there's no purchase decision that needs to be made it's just like yeah this looks good and uh, you get you know whatever it is whatever it is you get for that book it's not that much less than you would get with uh acx for a credit purchase and and find a way i big fans of find a way they gave michael mm -hmm. a yeti uh a, a coffee cup so uh I mean, he's, it doesn't uh, get much better than that. It it, it absolutely does not. Are and they oh, by the a way, sponsor of the CNM show. No, no, no. We don't have any sponsors of CNM show. <laughs> uh, uh, we have. Uh, I mean, uh, good mushing is going on. No, the uh, it, it's hey hey. We we do shout outs for good people who have taken yeah. care of us and find a way has has reached into markets that we couldn't get on our own and uh, and helped us. And they've all been they've always been extremely cordial. Uh, find a way are they're pros they do it right they and so elaine, are. elaine bateman yes all right yes yes moving on yes <laughs> That's, i have to i've 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 tweaked i rewrote uh, fratricide book six i know we don't have it in audio yet but you know when we get it in audio hey they'll get the new uh, the new text but i i would have had no no intention of changing that 
had it already been recorded yeah, the for thing that, the standalone the, stuff. The thing that happens, I mean, you know, we all we all make changes. It's like there's a typo or something, and you go in and you fix it, and th that doesn't impact anything. But if you go in and make, you know, minor changes, even you know, changing a sentence here and a sentence there, um, leaving the audio as is is not a problem at all. And even if you make a major change, you can you can still leave the audio as is. You just you will lose the WhisperSync link. So you lose the opportunity to sell it for seven dollars and forty nine cents. Get that? Hey, you know, buy the book and get the audio book for seven dollars and forty nine cents. Yeah. Did you? Uh, well, let me pop this question. This is a good question. I have no idea on this answer. Uh, it it is a slightly different uh, payment structure. Overdrive actually they limit the number of books that a library can distribute at a time. Uh, so essentially, they pay more but you only get paid once. Whereas with Hoopla, you get paid every time someone uh, downloads the book. Hoopla and, and Dreamscape is, uh, is owned by Hoopla, I believe. They're, they're partners somehow. They, Partner. have, they have a shared ownership group. Okay, okay. Way cool, way cool. Well, what about, uh, what about narrators? When you were doing this, uh, what did you do to find narrators? Wow, you know that was the most fun part of doing it was finding narrators and picking the right narrator for uh, different series, um, and getting the opportunity. I am an audiobook geek. I love audiobooks. I love narrators. For me, narrators are like sports stars. I I geek out when I get to meet a, a narrator. So to have the opportunity to contact someone and say, "Hey, would you like to work with us to do an audiobook?" is was thrilling, and then to actually get to work with some of my favorites, it was it was just way cool the interesting thing about it is that it's easy to say oh, this person would never be interested in my audiobook and they almost always are because these are their performers and they're always looking for the next opportunity they're for the <clears throat> most part um this is a job by job world and right now they are pretty much the only performers who are working actors aren't working um, yeah. but but narrators are working because they're home. They, they can they can work from their home studios. Um, so I would say if, if you're looking for a narrator, I would look for I, I would go to Audible and look for highly rated uh, audiobooks in your genre. Because if if you find a narrator who brings his own audience, that is tremendous. Yeah, R.C. Bray is a great example. R.C. Bray is the best example of that. He in in. in sci-fi fantasy things like that he delivers a massive audience and he knows it which is i mean good for him he should he should be compensated for what he knows uh, or for what he delivers but yeah. uh, you know just just find people that are popular in the area that you like working in if if you love this romance narrator uh, but she's never done sci-fi it's probably not a good fit you know there are a lot of really talented people doing sci-fi and the most popular people are still very much willing to work with indie authors. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, friends of ours uh, got Stephen Lang to uh, narrate their book, the actor. Nice. Uh -huh. yeah, I, I mean, look at, uh, and I expect you'll find more and more of that talent because I know one time we actually uh, looked for uh, the guy who plays House. Hugh, right? uh, Hugh, Hugh Laurie. Hugh, Hugh Laurie, Laurie. I think his name. Yeah. Yes. Hugh, Hugh Laurie. Yes. And, and he, he was willing he to do it. For a hundred thousand, do it. <laughs> I bet those those rates come down as actors are not working because they are yes. very much a hand to mouth. You could say, "But they make ten million, and yeah, but they live in a ten million dollar mansion in Beverly Hills, and they need that next gig for ten million, and the one after that, and then all of a sudden, two gigs canceled, and they're selling their house, and there's nobody to sell it to because nobody's making any money. So audiobooks. I mean, it, you still may pay more than your average Joe, but you could get a name. And once again, that name can help you sell more books, more audio books. What other, what other big names have you seen are, are, are available? Have you, have you ever heard anything from, from the screen actors guild? I have not, I've not really, I am. There are audiobook series that I, that I listen to. There's a series I listen to that's narrated by Tony Robbins, not, Tony Roberts, not Tony, Tony Roberts. Roberts. Tony Tony Roberts. Um, he's been doing it for years. Um, I have no idea what they're paying for this, uh, but there are a lot of people that do that. Those tend to be uh, traditionally published books. Uh, they're going that way where they've got much larger budgets, but you can get really top tier talent for uh, 
a very affordable rates. If you've got a 10 hour audio book and you're paying $300 an hour, which is, it, it's fairly normal. Um, it's $3,000. So yeah. it's, it's, it's very affordable. And then you get all of the money that comes in. Yeah. It, you get it all does that. not come in that quickly. They, yeah. uh, ACX audible pays 30 days after the close of the month, but you're not, it's, it's not like an ebook where you've got those opening day sales that are just, that just blow the doors off. It's, it's a slow, steady, it starts out high and works its way lower like everything else. Um, but it's, it's a fraction of the ebook revenue generally. Yeah. I, uh, I, I don't listen to audiobooks. Uh, cross country drives. I will get, uh, an audiobook to listen while I drive, but otherwise I, I, I have no commute. I have no time to listen. I have no bandwidth to download anything, videos or audio. So uh, Tantor was very nice. They actually sent me uh, CDs of mm -hmm. the books they had done for me be because they said, hey, I, we, we, we hear that you've never heard one of your own <laughs> audiobooks from us. So they sent me all of them and, and, and a whole set. It was very, very nice for them to do that. And they actually I sent know. me Two I sets. know a lot of authors who don't want to listen to their own audiobooks because they just they don't want to hear it. They they they, they have a work, different they're working idea. on the next thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, or they have a different idea of how people should sound, and you yeah. have a single narrator, and they're going they're trying to act the different parts. So that's that's different. I've I've done narration, and and I just read as me. I get excited at the uh, exclamation points and, and and the points, but it's still me. I'm not I'm not changing my voice for each character i will i will read it and give the uh, inflections but it, it's different and and some voice actors that's how they do it and others act the parts and do accents and all kinds of uh, things and sometimes it comes across as, as odd with a single actor what what have mm -hmm. have you been able to do multi actor sets we have not done that yet and and let me <clears throat> let me take a step back um, in in terms of the idea of of dealing with the narrator yourself one of the things I learned from Renee Rodman in a uh, podcast interview I did with her a long time ago, and Renee is just one of the really upper level uh, narrators that are out there. And she, the way she described the process of sort of turning over a book to the narrator is it becomes a collaboration. The, the audio book becomes a collaboration between the narrator and the author, but you as the author have to be willing to let the narrator do her part or his, his part. Mm -hmm. And what can happen, uh, usually to the detriment of the audiobook, is the, is the author will get involved too early and say, well, that's not the voice that I heard in my mind when I was writing this. Um, at, 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 you may be better served relying on the professionals here um, and letting them do their work because they, this is what they do for a living. And if yeah. you get in and start nitpicking things, it can it can damage the end product. You really are turning over the creative rights to the work to the production company or the narrator when you when you hire them. Which is exactly what you do them. if you license for TV or movie. You're, exactly. You're, they get the they do get creative control uh, uh, unless uh, they you rest it back, but that's not going to happen because you're not J.K. Rowling. So the. Uh, uh, for for my most popular series, the Terry Henry Walton Chronicles, it it was first a main a male protagonist, and this was the first Cartharian Gambit series that had a male protagonist. But we figured early on, as I was writing it, I'm like, no, we need we need a balance to him, and so he has a a, a female protagonist, so they're co equals through the series. And when we were looking for audio narrators, uh, Michael recommended Kate Rudd. And I'm like, this is a manly man doing manly stuff in a manly series in a post-apocalyptic world. And uh, yeah, we, we hired Kate Rudd and she has done a fantastic job with, with the whole series. She's another uh, narrator who brings her own audience because she is popular. People mm -hmm. like her narration style. They, and uh, I think that has helped uh, that whole series. So I, I, are we going to bundle any of that at some point in time? Yes. Yes. Okay. Have we not done? I think we've already bundled the first four, I think. I, 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 I don't, I don't know. I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure we have, um, but okay. we have not bundled beyond that. So we, we certainly yeah. should. Um, yeah. It, and it's, Kate, a, it's a popular series. It, uh, it is. Not, it, it, it really is. Um, Kate is a, a, 
a professional's professional when it comes to narrating. And that's another thing. If you're going out there finding your own narrator, there's a big difference. This is a creative thing. And, you know, we're all creative people and we're all, we, we are not all Craig Martell when it comes to, Hey, I've, this, this is the work. It's got to be done. It's going to be done today. And I'm going to get my 5,000 words in. I don't care what happens. Um, there are a lot of writers who is like, I eh, just don't really, I'm not feeling it today. So I'm not going to do it. Um, there are narrators like that too. So you want somebody who is a professional's professional. It does not take weeks to do an audio book. It takes days to yeah. do an audio. It, it takes a couple of days for them to prep, a couple of days for them to record. And then they either do the post-production themselves or they turn it over to somebody else. So um, if, if somebody is taking weeks, you've got the wrong person. Or if somebody says it's going to take weeks and it's not just a scheduling thing. If they say, hey, I can schedule you in for these three days, uh, two and a half weeks from now, that's great. You want somebody who's scheduling at that level. Yeah. And and also, Kate is a member of SAG-AFTRA. So talk about uh, hiring somebody who's a union member. Yeah, good point. There are there are narrators who are part of the SAG-AFTRA union and narrators that are not part of the SAG-AFTRA union. And SAG-AFTRA uh, is Screen Actors Guild? Screen Actors Guild, Guild yes. So it's, it's kind of fun working with uh, people that are SAG-AFTRA members. You, you feel like you're somehow or other a movie star by doing that. Um, but... <laughs> The benefit to the talent um, of, of being in the union is th they set minimum rates for them and they provide incredible health insurance for them, which is great. And we were as we as a company, LMBPN, were more than happy to pay those rates to, to be sure that those people could get health insurance for their family and, and as retirement, right? And retirement. Yes. Yeah. But for most of them, it was the health insurance that was the most important thing. And if for those narrators, if they earned over a certain amount of um, royalty fees or license fees for uh, for their work over a 12 month period, they qualified for the insurance. And we've been able to help people who weren't able to get insurance, get insurance by uh, doing additional books with them faster so that they could so that they could get that insurance. Um, so when you're working with with that kind of a talent, what typically happens is they are the, they are the, they either build the cost of the SAG after a fee, which is, it depends on the agreement that you've negotiated, but it's typically between 12 and 14%, um, that the companies who hire the, the talent has to pay. If you're going through ACX, there's a way of, of paying them through ACX. You don't have to pay the union directly. There are there are companies who will deal with the payment for you. Um, we've worked with a couple of them and essentially the narrator, you'll, you'll get the finished product for the book and we'll say it's 10.5 hours. Um, then you send that to the, the person who's going to process the payment to them. They take that, multiply it times the rate, add the SAG after it, add their fee for doing it. And they send you a bill for that. And it's all taken care of. The narrator's happy because they know they're going to get paid. Uh, yep. SAG after is happy because they get the union payment and you get to choose the narrator that you want and get the, get the finished product that, and, and deal with the finished product yourself, upload it to ACX and do all of that. Yeah. And, and my narrators that I hired through, uh, ACX, uh, Basil Sands, uh, Chris Abernathy, mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, they uploaded it to ACX as the producer. Yes. And then, yeah. Some, and, some will do that. Um, we yep. choose not to do that. We choose to upload ourselves because we want a little bit more control. And, you know, we have a lot of audiobooks out there. So, uh, yeah, for, for that. But if, if you're doing just your own stuff, having them upload it, it ACX is as, as an interface for uploading books, it's, it's not great. We'll just say it's suboptimal. If you can have someone else do it for you, that's great. Yeah. Well, and especially if you don't have any bandwidth to download and upload stuff like yeah. I don't. Or if you're so. doing a 190 chapter omnibus like uh, one of Mr. Martell's. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was Simon and Schuster. I'm sure still hating me for that one, <laughs> but uh, they they did it, and it made it made really good money, and still continues to produce. So I get my quarterly uh, quarterly check from them. Um, I saw a question back here a little while ago. Can you click it? Can, does I, it have I don't an know. eyeball for you? Oh, here we go. Uh, no, um, 1021 guy Anthony DeMarco. Can you see that one? I don't, I don't see the time thing, but uh, oh, okay. what speaking skills, is that the one? Yeah, so what, what speaking skills should an author work on before recording their own audiobooks? So Craig and I are going to have a different opinion uh, about this. There it is. Yeah, thank you. 
um, because Craig has, has narrated some of his own. Um, I, my personal opinion is that you shouldn't do it. You should let yeah. the professionals let the professionals do this. It's like I, I wouldn't I don't give myself medical advice. I don't operate on myself. I don't want to do my own audiobooks, despite the fact that there are people who tell me my voice would be good for that. I just I don't have those skills. And I've You're tried and I, I suck at it. I, I cannot do the different voices and, and the tonal changes. But Craig does nonfiction, which it, it makes perfect sense for for Craig to, to narrate nonfiction. And have you also narrated some of your fiction? I, I've read short stories on uh, on Facebook. I'll do things like that. So mm -hmm. I haven't done a formal narration because I okay. don't have the facility and have no desire to set it up. I'm just like you. This is If I can pay somebody to do it, I will. Uh, Chris Abernathy did uh, my one and a half hour novelette once book funnel said hey we'll do audio up to an hour and a half so this book was an hour and 27 minutes i think and mm -hmm. uh, and he did that and and gave me the file i uploaded it and i do it as a giveaway to build my audio list so guy i mean if you were really determined to do it i would first just kind of practice just take just take a couple of chapters and record yourself and see what it sounds like and if you feel like you're 80% of the way there. Then there are some things you can do. There are some online courses. Um, ACX actually has courses um, that you can take that are free that that help to build skills. And there are a lot of a lot of narrators that do just teach courses on YouTube and things as well. So that it's, it, there's there's help out there if you really want to do it yourself. But be sure that you really want to do it yourself. Yep. Yep. My my narrator out of Anchorage, Basil Sands. He mm -hmm. does that. He he That's teaches cool. courses on narrating. And he's great. Yes, he's he's a very talented narrator, and his courses are good. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He's got a great voice. Um, and he was in the Marine Corps. So well, there you go. There you go. Always yeah. a bonus. Always a bonus. The uh, where do we want to go next? What do we want to talk about? Uh, selling, selling said audiobooks. What have you seen selling. that works? Wow. You know, that's that's the uh, $60 million question. I don't know that there is an answer. Um, my answer always when I'm asked that question is selling the ebooks sells the audiobooks. The more ebooks you sell, uh, the more audiobooks you sell. It is if it's humanly possible to release the audiobook at the same time as the ebook, do it. But I would not I would not forego six months of ebook revenue to, to match those up. But if, if it is possible, if, if, if it fits into your release schedule and, and you can do it that way, that's great. One thing that is working, if you can get a Chirp deal, Chirp is amazing. And uh, I, that's book bumps, audio. Results. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah. And it, it run, it's run through Find Away. Okay. And so if you get those, you set the price yourself. And if it, it would be interesting if you're not already subscribed to the chip newsletter for, you know, your genre of choice, um, just go sign up for it. So you get the newsletter, you see what's coming in and you see the different prices. Um, we have done chirp deals for $1.99 that have been wildly profitable for us. I see other people do them for $3.99, $4.99, $5.99, $6.99. I have no idea how that's working for them, but the, the $1.99 price point um, sold a lot of audiobooks, and then there's a lot of carry through because obviously you don't want to do it if you've just got one. You want to do it if it's the first book of a long series. And Chirp is U.S. only, though. It is U.S. only, and obviously you have to be wide to do that. So yeah. it's uh, the the difference between wide for, for people who don't know. If you're Audible exclusive, it's you you earn a forty percent royalty. If you're wide, Audible, which still does most of the business, pays you a 25% royalty, and then you need to make that up through the wide audience. But you have access to libraries and Hoopla and Chirp and things like that when you go wide, as as, as well as all of these other all of these other vendors. And there, I think that I, was I have, I've heard statistics that say that around the world, Audible is about 40%. My experience is different, but you know, we're mostly a U.S. based sales company for audio. And I, I, I think that was Joe Penn's advice during the uh, self-publishing show back uh, a, a few weeks ago that get it, get your audio into libraries and get your uh, your mm -hmm. ebooks into libraries. You will you will. It's, it's almost like free money at that point. If you're yes. wide, if you're wide. Yes. And it, it as 
as you know from from watching the Opus X experiment that that we're doing and, and that that Michael talked about at uh, twenty books, it is it's a process to build a wide audience. So if yeah. if you have a series that you can take wide, thank you, Facebook user. I'm glad you like this, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you have a series that you can take wide to start doing that, just from an ebook perspective, um, that's a good idea. And certainly consider uh, the wide opportunity. I, I think it's a it's a legitimately good strategy to say I'm going to go ACX exclusive for the first year and then request to be released from the seven year exclusive commitment, which w they will generally grant, and then go wide. Then take the uh, take the audiobooks to find a way. And that gets you into the libraries a year later, but it still gets you into the libraries. Yes, yes. And if you talk to them nice, you might get a Yeti mug. Um, <clears throat> but you got you almost got to be somebody for that, though. Uh, well, yeah, I don't have one. Yeah, I they actually offered me one, but I had uh, I, I I didn't take it. I should have I should have taken it for you. You should have, yeah. And I'm I'm maybe going to hold a hold a grudge gr about that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm crushed. Um, I don't think so. I don't think that you can set up an audiobook deal for free on Chirp. I don't know that for a fact, but I don't think so because I, I don't see how anybody makes any money from that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I know uh, anytime I see a Chirp deal pop up, and and uh, good good people let me know, I'll, I'll promote it to my uh, my group, and I do have that audio list now, which it, it has grown pretty well. I I think I have five hundred, six hundred. Really? That are on the mm -hmm. audio list just for audiobooks. So anytime you have chirp deals, please uh, uh, let me know, and I'll pu I'll promote it to my because I I sent two emails to my audio list in the last seven months, and I continue to build that list through the free audiobook. So my onboarding sequence with my email newsletter, I have there's five separate segments that mm -hmm. they're that they roll through before they get dropped into my main uh, list group for my main science fiction group, and one of those. It offers them. I, I offer a free short story in all five, but one of them I actually offer a uh, audiobook and let them know. Oh, by the way, here's a free audiobook, but you'll be signing up for my audio list as well as a separate list, and I'll only let you know of audio deals on that list. Are you doing a, a separate Facebook group for audio as well? I, I am not. I'm slaving off the LMBPN audio since that's ninety percent of my uh, audio books okay. out there. One of uh, an, an author that we work with, uh, Al Kanor has really put a focus on on audio and she was the first person that i knew of who set up an audio group and it was very effective for her so we sort of piggybacked off her idea and, and mickey coker who is, yeah. is is in the chat here mickey is running that for us and doing a tremendous job of connecting with people who who like audio and, and uh, bringing more people in. Yep. We're, yep. we're bringing in more. And, and we're seeing a big difference in the sales of not just the audiobooks that we sell ourselves, but the, the stuff that we're licensing um, because we're focused on it to a core group of people that are really focused on and love audiobooks. And that goes, uh, that's that's partly the answer to this if you're ACX exclusive. And it doesn't matter where you have your audiobooks. If you're ACX exclusive, you can get away with one link. Uh, if you're not, then you can show multiple links to wherever your listeners might get their audio content. So uh, it's like when I when I publish my ebook newsletter and I give the Amazon.com, here's Amazon.co.uk, here's Amazon.ca, here's Amazon.com.au. So I show I show those four markets so people can click where they want to go. If your audio books are scattered throughout, you can do that same thing because I have. Uh, I had a person contact me and said, I only found one of your audiobooks. And I'm like, geez, I have like 60 out there. And they're like, can you send me some links? And I'm like, oh, geez. So I sent, here's search criteria on Tantor. Here's search criteria on Podium. Here's here's how you find them on Dreamscape. And oh, by the way, Audible, here's uh, here's that where they are there too. And it was a challenge because I had not done that before. I didn't have them all consolidated in one place and bring up the file, copy, paste. I didn't have, and I'm like, holy cow, I can see why they're uh, they're hard to find. Yeah, and in, in a perfect world, we'd all have websites where here's the book, here's the link where you can buy the ebook, here yeah. here are the 19 links where you can buy the audiobook. But yeah, uh, it, it, it's it's not that kind of a world because we've still got to publish books. Well, and I I I haven't done that. Uh, I haven't done. I'm like, oh, by the way, I, I just put a note. These are also available in audio. Yeah, and some of them, it's like, oh, that's nice, but I can't find it. 
And and anytime a a reader or a content consumer can't find something, boy, they got to really love you to keep searching. Uh, you want to make it easy on them. <laughs> so yeah, I got twenty bucks, and whatever I find first, that's what I'm buying. And uh, if you make them work too hard, it ain't going to be you. So uh, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, for sure. yeah, I do have I the website, a- and I do need to put those uh, put those up there. I see a question from Facebook user there about the uh, resources, guides, and strategies for ACX exclusive. So um, the answer to that question and answer to that question is ACX themselves, they provide a lot of material. They really want you to be successful and it's good yeah. material. So log in to the, to the ACX website and you'll find a lot of material. They also do, they have a, a YouTube channel which is very effective for teaching. They, they have, I think it's called ACX University and they have live courses once a week. It's all free um, with, you know, a couple of years worth of content there. So there's a great deal of content there on the, just the basics that you need to do to market your, your audio books. A lot of that. If you're, if you're self-publishing your own work, you, you already know. Um, but it, it's, it's completely useful. It's all free. And the, the courses tend to be like, 35, 40 minutes. How much can you expect to pay a rock star narrator, not house per hour? I really don't have any idea. I, I wish I knew, but I don't. It's a, you better have some cash sitting inside. I, I, I would, I would be ready to pay 20 to 30 grand for a rock star narrator. Uh, I think RC Bray can be had for less than that nowadays, but damn, he brings in a lot of sales. I, I, I'm not, RC Bray I, really wants to do um, rev share deals too. Okay. But, me, but he picks he is in a position, he picks the books. Yes. Uh, you, you say, hey, I'd like to do this book. Well, okay, it was a USA, best, uh, USA Today bestseller, fine. But if you're, if you're putting a book out there and it's got five sales, it, he's not, he's not going to be so keen on that. But he does I like at, long term. I was at a, a, a conference, and I can't remember the name of it. It was an audio conference in Kansas City. It was fascinating. But there was an award show there essentially for uh, indie, indie audio books. Yeah. And it was funny um we had i think we had six books nominated you probably had one or more of those books craig yeah i did and uh, so i was there representing lmbpn and we did want win one award and in in giving my acceptance speech for the book because i was the one that was there i thanked rc bray for not having a book in that category because that was like the only category that he didn't win essentially everything that he was entered in he won yeah so he 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 got his 10,000 steps in just walking back and forth from his seat to the stage. Yep. Yep. I, I actually need to try to get in that queue and say, Hey, I've sold the uh, 10,000 copies of this book. Is there any way you, you can narrate it for me, man, please? Maybe I'll pay you. We can do it next year. Um, uh, <clears throat> come to Vegas. <laughs> the, yeah, uh, he should come to Vegas. Yeah. I, I, we have, we have a bunch of narrators coming and actually I asked uh, Steve Campbell to come on the show this morning. Not, not you, the other Steve Campbell. Uh, so we could have both Steve Campbell's at once. As, oh, as that a, would have been so fun. I, I from, met him at that show in Kansas city. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, no, I didn't meet him. I was, it was I New met York. him in New you York. I met him yeah. in New York and then I, he was, he was narrated and won for um, a, uh, a multi narrator narration. And I met his partner, uh, a, a wonderful young lady. I can't remember her name, but she's like, oh, you're that Steve Campbell. And so Steve and I, other, we, the other, yes, Steve the Campbell. other, yeah, yeah. We're each the other Steve Campbell. And so we have just agreed that whenever anyone congratulates us for anything that we didn't do, we just thank you. We say thank you. And then we let the other person know. We let the other Steve know. <laughs> yep. Yep. I call him SC2. So uh, you're SC1 to me, but I'm sure yeah, he's a very talented friends, narrator. He is. He is. And, and an all-star, and uh, and I think he might be looking for some work too. So I think uh, the Steve Campbell, not that one, the other one. Yeah, be, if you're, uh, if you're is, looking is for a narrator for a male narrator, male talent, um, Steve would you can't go wrong with th- with that Steve Campbell. Yeah, I did, add, but I, I thought about it this morning, so I asked him like an hour before the show. I should have asked him last week, and I bet you we could have you had you both on because he would provide that narrator perspective then for for selecting a narrator and making sure you fit with your narrator, just mm-hmm. like your cover artist and just like your editor. I mean, it is your work and you need to be comfortable with it, but you also need to not keep the death grip around the throat of your story such that it never gets anywhere or people don't want to work with you. And this was one of the things that Steve Campbell, our Steve Campbell did, was uh, when he was working with SAG-AFTRA, 
He became a popular entity because he paid on time with no problems, made it easy, worked with the uh, actors to deliver the content in a way that everybody was happy with. And so he, he was a Hollywood rock star with SAG-AFTRA and, and could get access to talent other people couldn't. That was fun, and I, you know, it's it's nice that you give me the credit for that. That's it, this is an LMBPN thing, but when we would go to New York to uh, to the the big audio conference in New York, everybody wanted to work with us, and everybody had heard from their narrator friends that you really want to work with with this company. So that that it is a small community. There are a lot of narrators. It's a small community, um, paying people on time, treating people well. Um, word gets around being respectful. And that I, I think that's a, a consistency that we in 20 books, which it starts from the top, that's Michael, is just you treat people decent, decently, don't be a dick. And that simple premise of being kind in all things, even if you don't get along, it's okay. Hey, we, you're not going to be the right narrator for me. Let me go find somebody else. It's okay. But don't uh, 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 you don't have to be an ass about it in such a way that you get, uh, you get yourself blacklisted. And I try to, I try to share that every day on 20 books to 50 K what it's like to, to not be that way and, and be kind and, and appreciated. Even if you can do nothing for somebody, it's still okay. You don't try to always try to get something, try to give more than you get. And it's amazing what you can accomplish. LMBPN has that reputation. Cause if you go to dinner with Michael, you'll have to arm wrestle him, uh, for, for the check. Uh, and this mm -hmm. is sometimes I, I try to pay. And I mean, he always just like, he'll sneak away. Oh, I got to go to the bathroom. What, he, what he's doing <laughs> is going up and paying for the check. And then, so when you're done, you're like, Hey, check comes to me. And they're like, Oh, it's already paid. Uh, and so this is, these are the kinds of things that Michael appreciates uh, when people spend time with him and, and talks about the business. He loves talking about the publishing business. Audiobooks, yeah, uh, I mean, he will defer to Steve because Steve has been the interface for LMBPN for our audio. And, but Michael has worked some deals too. And Judith oh, yeah. now. Judith, Judith is a monster working with these uh with with the, the production companies. Uh, somebody yeah. just posted in the uh, in the channel, it was the Here Now Festival in Kansas City. Yeah. And it was fantastic. I, I saw another question earlier about um the different kinds of things that are going on and uh, multi-narrator productions, they'd ask if I'd ever worked on any, and the answer is no to that. But I, we've talked about it. It's a little bit more expensive to do that, and it, it's it's just more work coordinating everything. I've, I've spoken with narrators who do it, and they love it. Yeah. They love doing that kind of thing. But one of the things that was really cool about the Here Now Festival, that it was not just an audiobook festival. It was an audio festival. And it was amazing the number of people that were there doing really creative fictional storytelling via podcast. And, you know, that all started a few years ago with, uh, you know, a big production company that was doing Serial, I think was the first one, S-E-R-I-A-L. That was the first one of those. And there are more of them. But these are people who are just like, hey, let's get uh, two narrators together or three narrators together and a few authors. And we'll, we'll just write some stories and the narrators will tell the stories and it'll be fun. And it's the stuff that they were doing, the talent level that was there that were throwing themselves into these projects was just off the charts. And you just listen to this for an hour and go, this is amazing. And there was a lot of it. And I, if you're a podcast listener, you're probably hearing some of that now because this was about a year ago that the Here Now Festival was. It's fun stuff. Yeah. It, it, this is an exploding industry, and it's not just audiobooks. It's everywhere now. Well, and, and ACX cracked down. The reason they cracked down on the free codes is because people were <clears throat> throwing together narration and uploading it using all the free codes to get money when they invested no money to uh, uh, as part of it. And then moving on and uploading another one, and it just completely overwhelmed the system. I don't know who was doing that, but they are uh, yeah, yeah, the same people that were book stuffing five years ago. Yeah, it's the same people. Yeah, because, oh, hey, this is a royalty share. And so now you're getting 200 codes, and 200 codes might get you $5,000 or uh, $1,000. Uh, you know, and uh, if you paid nothing to do that, well, then, hey, that's that's $1,000. Why not? Let's do another one. Let's do another one. And and they were uploading so damn many that ACX got overwhelmed and they, you got to stop. So we need to remove this uh, incentive for the scammers, just like the book stuffers. It really, uh, it, it's, it's a shame 
that people do that, but hey, the pendulum swings and and uh, now we got we have the codes, we just don't get paid for them. So we'll continue doing what we're doing, I expect. Oh yeah, I mean completely. But re realistically, the idea of being paid for giveaways was sort of odd. Yeah. But, I mean it's great, but it was odd. Yeah, yeah. But it's it still juices if you do a giveaway, somebody downloads it, and then they can leave a review. It kind of yes. juices sales too. Yes, yes. That 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 I always thought was the most important part of the codes, and that that remains. I don't know the answer to this one. I hate is it true question. So I just oh think. wow, um, is it true that if you're stuck in a royalty share contract with ACX and you want to go wide, you can produce a multi actor performance of the book and go wide with that? I believe that technically that is true because it's a different, um, it, it's a different end product um, that would be really expensive. Um, yeah, but I, I believe that technically it's true. But I'm I'm not a lawyer and I don't play one on television. You need to look at the agreement that you have with ACS. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and you're at home, so you didn't stay in a Holiday Inn Express either. I did not. You no. are a lawyer, and you're probably staying in a Holiday Inn Express. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying in a, in a nice resort, actually, with a kitchenette. Even so, uh, what, yeah, here's a here's a good question. I do know the answer to this for some of the folks like uh, people with Blackstone. Uh, that was uh, seven figures. Top selling indie audiobooks. Return. Yes. Yes. So, yeah, the, the very top is I mean, it's, it's just like with with ebooks, the people at the very top tier do really, really well. And it's yeah. the same thing. There's just this momentum that comes along with a best-selling book or a best-selling audio book that's just going out to everybody. And it just, yeah, it, it just, and then Amazon pushes it because, Hey, yeah. yeah. Amazon so is it, getting a cut of every sale. If you're selling a thousand a books a day. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, it can be a lot. It's hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it's not, but it, it's a top book like Brandon Sanderson, his oath bringer, one credit, I think it was 43 hours of audio. And I guarantee, I, I know that was at the top of the charts for a, a long, long time because who isn't yep. going to get 43 hours for a single credit? Yeah. I don't remember the gentleman that was at um, 20 books last year, I think. Was it last year? It might have been the year before who was there, who was had started as an indie, went traditional, and I think he signed a seven figure audio deal with someone. Yeah, that's Nicholas Sansbury Smith. So, with yeah, the, with Blackstone, he's exclusive with Blackstone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick Smith does great. I mean, he writes great books. It always mm -hmm. and and I can't emphasize this enough. People are like, "Oh, you're just jamming shit out." It's quantity over quality. You have to write a great book. You have to write a compelling story. You can't be uh, you kill, killing dogs. Uh, you, uh, the uh, <laughs> but the story remains king, and there are a lot of elements to a successful story. Kate Pickford, shout out to my my pal Kate who has started putting uh, uh, videos online that go to developmental editing. What are you doing in regards to your story, things that she's been doing for years? She's out of the dev edit business, but here's here's some lessons that she learned. She's doing that just to, to help people through this period right now and help mm -hmm. you write better. So uh, take a look at those. We'll, uh, we'll try to post some links to, to Kate's stuff so you can see them. And uh, and and learn more about what what makes for a great story, not just a good story, but a great story. So uh, uh, that will carry the day. So Nick Smith, he's earned every bit of it. He writes great stories that are compelling, and then he gets them narrated by top talent and uh, away, and pushed. Uh, Blackstone has their own audio market that they push their audiobooks to. Yeah, I mean that's that's the key to everything. It. it Great books are the key to everything, and we—it's so easy to get trapped. And I'll, some of you probably know I did a podcast called The Author Biz, and the most popular episodes would be the ones where people would come on and talk about um, techniques for selling more books that didn't involve writing good books. It was just, and and so there could be a mindset that grew that I could write an average book and use these techniques and. And become super successful with it, and that's not the that's not the secret. The secret is to write a great book and then use these techniques. Well, and you can use the techniques on the first book in the series, but if your book sucks, uh, book two is not going to sell. 
yeah. no matter what kind of techniques you have. You can always sell the first book. There's always ways to get that first book into people's hands. But if the book isn't great, then your, your read through the second book is going to drop off rather significantly and then any follow on books. If your book is great and your read through is high, it will stay high as long as you keep writing great stories. I mean, over time, they may fall off, but look at Jay Allen. He's still hitting it hard with, uh, he's on book 17, 18 of a series. He gave a, a speech, uh, talked about that last year at 20 Books Vegas. That's, that video is online on how to continue being successful with a long series mm -hmm. and things he does to keep that series juiced. So when he releases a new book, his whole, the all 18 books lift up in the ranks and, and he climbs high. If you if you could see an author rank nowadays, which you can't, uh, Jay is always always up there, <clears throat> and he's producing maybe four books a year, three three or four. I mean, it's not it's not overwhelming uh, a qual a quantity, but his qual quality is good, and he maintains his readers. So once you write a great book, and that reader comes in and says, I, "I this is a great book," how do you keep that reader on board? And that's all. That's that goes to those techniques, the newsletter lists and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like I think my. Uh, I think my short story that uh, Chris narrated and I put on Book Funnel is a great short story. So that one, I, I I keep rereading it. I'll go back and I'm like, this is this is one of my better better things. So as far as an audio, if somebody gets it free, I hope they come back and say, I want to get on your audio list because your audios are good. I like your stories. So that's it, we're trying, and this is something also when you're building a list, whether it's a newsletter list or something give a better example of yourself. I, I hamstrung myself for a year because I gave away a, a, a sci-fi comedy kind of book as opposed to something more representative of my, my everyday work. And so nowadays I'm giving my newsletter magnet is a full book. It's 62,000 word book that I took out of a KU and put it on book funnel and said, Hey, sign up for my newsletter. With, here is a full book because it's representative of a lot more of, of my work. So. Yeah, and if if they don't like that first book, then they're not going to be buying any. They're not going to they're yeah. not going to get them for free on KU. They've they've taken their shot with you. They, they've moved on. There's plenty of opportunities and options out there. Don't give them a different option. Uh, give them your option and convince them this is the great option because look at how cool the story is. Yeah, I I have a an author who I I really like. I know her personally, and I enjoy her work. And I've been on her newsletter forever. And one day I, uh, she sent a, I, I saw something online and sign up for my newsletter and get this free book. And I, it, the book looked good. And I probably bought 20 of her books. But I signed up for the newsletter again so that I could get the free book. And I read the free book. And it was the worst thing I've ever read by her. It was some early something that she had, you know, pulled out of, out of publication. She tweaked it a little bit. And it's like, this is a disaster. You can't use this as a, as right. a lead magnet. It, it's just, <laughs> no one's going to want to read your books. And her, that's right. Her current work is amazing. This just like not a good move. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. Do the other, yes. do the other thing. <laughs> so it looks like somebody wants to uh, read and listen to that short story you're talking about. Oh, that's a, a green door of fate. I'll, I'll actually drop that link in uh, just to show you and uh, my audio list. Yes, you have to sign up through Book Funnel to get it, uh, but you can uh, uh, unsubscribe anytime. And that's a unique list. I've only emailed it twice because I never, I never hear about those chirp deals, even if they're my books. Somebody <laughs> never tells me. So yeah, I'm the I, last I guess, to know. I guess you'd know that they weren't your books. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I'm the last to know when my books are on sale. So uh, <clears throat> the the uh, I'll put it up there. Um, and that's uh, the la the two times I sent were because of chirp deals. It's like, oh, geez, a buck ninety nine. The first time I sent it was when I found out that it was U.S. only, uh, because I'm a lot. Of, I had a, I had some outraged fans. And then uh, the second time, uh, it was much much better received after the flood of people uh, un unsubscribed because of the U.S. only biz. <laughs> thanks, thanks for that. Um, <clears throat> it's <laughs> it's still it's a uh, it, it's a way to get your uh, book funnel good on them for doing that. A uh, publish drive now also uh, is consolidating everything. You can yes. get audio, ebook, and paperback all in one place with uh, with publish drive. So that's another that's another uh, aggregator like uh, Draft to Digital, who uh, is working to consolidate products and one stop shopping. I'm a big fan of one stop shopping. I have to go to uh, like eight different 
dashboards to see what my stuff is doing for the day. And uh, if you, if you, I mean, you pay a little bit, yeah, you're paying, you're paying every, you're, every middleman you're paying. So if you can upload yourself, you're going to get the max uh, of your revenue. But uh, how much of that time? Time is money. And uh, what do you want to do with it? As you get more and more books, you realize like Steve did that, hey, there's certain things I want to do myself. And then there's the other things that hey, I, I really don't because they just take so much time. One of the nice things about the, you mentioned Publish Drive, and one of the nice things about their model as they as they add all these products is it's a, you pay a fee and you can distribute all of these different things. So you pay, it just depends on what your volume level, number, number of titles that you have is, um, but you you just pay a set fee and they're not taking a percentage of anything. So they distribute audiobooks, for example. So if they're distributing to ACX for you, you get, it would be wide. So you're getting 25%, but you get the full 25%. If they, if they distribute through find a way, you would get find a way takes 20% of the revenue. You get 80%, but you get the full 80%. So they're doing everything just for that fee that you're paying. Yeah. So it's not a percentage like it was a couple of years ago. Now it's a flat fee and it can be very reasonable. Um, and, and to have a single place, like Craig said, to just go get all that information is astonishing. Yep. Yep. Well, we've been on for 66 minutes now, Steve. <clears throat> so I, I appreciate your time. I appreciate the uh, insight and especially the wisdom that you, uh, you bring from your experience. How many audiobooks have you been a part of? Hmm. Uh, we produced, I think it was 220 and we're, we're still, we're still doing more. <laughs> so, um, 220 or so we'll, we'll probably do another 20 between now and the end of the year. Um, but a, a lot, and it's it's really really fun. And uh, if if you do get the opportunity to do it yourself, to do to do the select the narrator, publish the audiobook yourself through CX, it's a fun process. So don't be afraid of it. Um, <laughs> find 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 the right narrator. Work with them yourselves. You'll be surprised at how approachable they are. They're 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 yeah. working just like we are, and they want to work with you. You bet. You bet. All right, fellow humans, uh, thanks for stopping by. Looks like we had uh, like about 40 people listening in live. We'll have uh, hundreds uh, watch it later. So uh, it, it's, a, it's always a good interview, always a good time uh, to take a little time out of your day. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for the questions. And thank you, Craig. I enjoyed this. Thanks. Thanks. Peace, fellow humans.